Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the DCEU, Supergirl and the Flash film. There are some new photos that have been released and they act as like kind of first look photos for a couple of the costumes that we're going to be getting in the film, specifically related around Supergirl. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so as you all know, the Flash film has been delayed for many years. They've shot the film now, which is obviously a good sign, but still lots of things continue to plague the film, especially recently with Ezra Miller and all the controversy surrounding him and his actions over in Hawaii. That's been very, very public and people have questioned, is this going to affect the Flash film? Well, I think we'll just have to wait and see what the box office results are and how the fan response is to The Flash when it eventually comes out, not this year, but next year. And that's right, The Flash got delayed this year again by another extra year. I don't know exactly when it's coming out in 2023, but it is coming out and hopefully it doesn't get delayed any further. But one of the main exciting new things about The Flash film and what it has to offer is the fact that the film is going to be starring many, many actors who are playing very interesting DC Comics characters. Now, the big one, obviously we have Michael Keaton returning as Batman, that is huge, but the most exciting one for me, and I nearly saw her in public when they were filming The Flash about a year ago in London, was Sasha Calais as Supergirl. Now, that was announced a while ago that Sasha Calais would be playing Supergirl. She's been commended and basically clapped on by Melissa, who obviously played Supergirl in the TV show, and now Sasha is going to be the next version the next live action version to be more specific of Supergirl to hit the screen. Now people are very excited about this, I'm very excited about this and actually at a convention just recently at a licensing expo in Las Vegas in the United States of America basically had a display of different DC suits. Now some of them were for other different films and everything like that but we're specifically going to be focusing on the ones from the Flash film. So we have new very close up looks at the suits of the Flash and Supergirl from the film. We're going to be going over the Supergirl one first and then we'll be going over the Flash one because the main topic of today's video is the Supergirl suit because overall even though we've had behind the scenes photos from when they were filming out in the public with Sasha Kelly in the Supergirl suit and we got like a logo reveal when they first announced Sasha playing the role of Supergirl and then also in the trailer, there was that one trailer they released, Sasha is in the back of one shot and also you see her cape in another shot. So basically, you know, the extent of what we've seen from Supergirl is actually very minuscule compared to, you know, how soon this film was supposed to come out. But again, it's been delayed, so obviously they're not releasing much new stuff as of right now, but they will closer to the time of release. However, at this licensing expo, we have these photos and I'm just reading off a Screen Rant article, so I'll leave the Screen Rant article in the description below and they credit the people who actually took the photo at the expo and this is obviously put on by, you know, the costume department and whoever has access to the rights of these suits, they put it here at the licensing expo. And so if you look up close in the Supergirl suit, what do we see? Now, the main difference between this suit and any traditional Supergirl suit, that being the Cara Zorel or Cara Danvers version of Supergirl that we used to on shows like Melissa's Supergirl on the CW, is the fact that this suit has an entirely red upper half of the body, that being the shoulders and up to the neck over the symbol, over the House of El Crest, is completely red. And that is not a traditional thing, however there is iterations of Supergirl from the comics that do have this but it's kind of rare and so it's obviously the big sticking out point of the Supergirl suit that makes it different from the TV show version, from Melissa's version and I think it's a pretty new cool addition to the Supergirl suit and I think it kind of goes with you know the rest of the suit as a whole and I think it looks really good, I think Sasha looks awesome. Again one of the big points with Sasha's version of Supergirl is the fact that she has black hair. That is quite different from most other Supergirls because traditionally Supergirl has blonde hair and she also has short hair. That is a big difference as well which relates to the Supergirl who wears this suit in the comics who is not 
the traditional car as well. And if we look at the House of Elcrest, it's a little bit different from the traditional House of Elcrest. I don't know if there's anything too much to break down about it, but I think the main difference is, you know, the red surrounding it and then how under the crest it's entirely blue. And you can see as you go down to the kind of abdominal area, there's like a little bit of padding that just kind of adds to the suit. And then she has the traditional kind of Supergirl sleeves and like the end of the sleeves like go through the kind of thumb area. I don't actually remember the specific name of what that kind of sleeve is called. However, that is something that Melissa did have on her Supergirl suit. So that is, you know, a big comparison to be made. And obviously she doesn't have the traditional Supergirl skirt. She has the pants. That is something that Melissa Supergirl adopted in the later part of Supergirl's run in the last couple of seasons, so that is something that definitely has been set precedent by Melissa Supergirl, so you have that comparison as well. Also, you know, it continues down blue, down to her pants, her trousers, and you know, she has these kind of stripy bits, I don't know what to specifically call them, but it just adds some sort of texture to the suit. But the overall texture of the suit has, you know, these kind of like folds or kind of like creases or like little indents. I don't know what to specifically call it, but if you look at the suit, it's everywhere and it's the kind of texture. That's what I'm trying to get at. I don't know specific names. I'm very bad at, you know, texture and like costumes and stuff like that. That is just my fault. So I apologize for not knowing the specifics, but I'm sure a lot of you guys don't as well. And we have a photo from another angle from behind the suit. We have the Supergirl cape is attached to the neck rather than over the shoulders or anything. There is no kind of clip on bit like you have with the old Supergirl suit or like the old Superman suit that we had in Supergirl played by Tyler Hecklin. And so this cape is fully red it actually looks quite brighter than the actual red of the suit so it extends like all the way down to her feet so it's a pretty cool looking cape pretty standard for superman and supergirl and then if you continue down to the lower regions like her legs again the same texture kind of dominates the suit and it even goes further down to the ankles and onto the shoes which is all part of the suit so it's kind of like one big onesie i have no idea how supergirl slips into the suit i'm presuming there is some sort of like zip at the back obviously you can't see the zip because of the cape but yeah so one big awesome onesie it looks great i love the color scheme i love the texturing it looks like a supergirl suit but with its own unique additions, especially with the red at the top. I think that is the biggest difference. And also the fact that there is no Supergirl skirt, which is obviously traditional to the suit. And so I like that we can make those comparisons with Melissa's Supergirl because she's had various iterations of the suit, but really two main different ones. One with the skirt, the traditional kind of looking one, and then one with the pants and this suit the Sasha Kelly one looks more like the later Supergirl suit that Melissa wore. Okay, so let's move on to analyze the Flash's suit. Now, the Flash's suit hasn't been like released properly in detail as of now, and this is probably our first time seeing it in proper detail because the suit we've seen has been predominantly CGI in some of the trailers, so it was kind of hard to get a grasp what exactly it was looking like. And so we see here that this suit looks actually very cool like I really do think it looks very cool it looks kind of like the traditional flash suit however it's lacking a lot of the gold I think they could add a bit more gold to the suit the gold bits are only the lightning bolts but as you know with like Grant Gustin's flash suit he has like gold bits kind of streaking all around and it has the separations in the suit but the separations are more like kind of armor plates and they don't have like any extra color to it so it's pretty much just like a darker shade of red if you look closer in the suit and it had some padding as well obviously around the abdominal area and the chest area to make it just kind of look like buff and you know like a superhero i guess the kind of texturing is quite different from our traditional flash suits again it does look more like it's armored rather than you know anything that is like Supergirl suit that looks like it has proper texture and it's made of like fabric or any kind of material similar to that. So again, I think the Flash is still sticking with this kind of armor theme that they had in the other Flash suit that Ezra wore in the past. 
I was not a fan of that. I really don't like it. I think this is a big upgrade because it looks a bit more natural. It looks more like a normal flash suit or a comic book suit rather than a tin can. However, I have to say the cow still looks a bit weird and I don't like how it's a helmet rather than a kind of fabric cow. That was a big complaint that people had about Grant's suit in the past season of The Flash when it was more like a helmet. And they have since backtracked on that and gone back to more of a traditional cow. And so I think that is kind of the big letdown of the suit. However, it doesn't look too bad in these photos. But when you see it in the trailer and in live action, it still looks a little bit weird. Just because it's like a helmet and I don't know who wears a helmet apart from if you're a Power Ranger, I guess. So yeah, let's move on to the next bit. If we move further down on his suit... He doesn't have like a belt like the Flash traditionally has. He does have the lightning bolts surrounding his kind of waist area. And then if you continue further down, he's still got the kind of indents in the suit without the gold bits. You know, kind of like this darker shade of red. Still the same kind of texture and material. And then he actually has boots. Unlike Supergirl, Supergirl doesn't have boots. That's another thing. Normally Supergirl does have boots on her suit but she has more of this onesie kind of get up going on, like I previously talked about. And so with the Flash's boots, it's pretty much, you know, not gold boots or anything like the Flash in the TV show just got. Although I can't tell the proper color of the boots, it looks kind of silvery, some of the bits, and then it's also red as well. So it's, you know, like a kind of traditional Flash boot kind of situation, but it's more metallic than normally see. But it does actually look pretty cool if I'm going to be completely honest. I think the suit overall is a big upgrade from the past suit. I think they can do better. I think they need to phase away from this kind of armored looking suit. And I think this is like the first good step to going towards a better looking Flash suit. Again, the status of the Flash in the DCU is very uncertain right now, obviously because of the many delays and the fact that Ezra is an extremely controversial figure. I don't know if Warner Brothers and DC are going to want to work with him in the future. So are they going to try and phase him out and get a new Flash in? Could it be maybe Wally West of the DCU? Or as a last option, are they going to go in-house and ask Grant Gustin from the Flash TV show once the Flash ends to play the Flash in the DCU? Obviously that would be amazing, however that is a very big long shot. And I don't know why I mentioned it, but, you know, there's always the chance. But I would think it would go with, like, a new Flash before they went with Grant, if I'm completely honest. Because he is so busy and he might not want to be locked into, you know, the DCEU and all these films. Because it's very time consuming, I guess. But Ezra could totally stick and it could still be Ezra's Flash as Barry Allen. But we'll have to wait and see. But one thing's for certain, we're going to be seeing lots of Supergirl. Sasha is not controversial at all, there is nothing bad about her and her Supergirl. As of right now, lots of people are excited and I really just can't wait to see her in the Flash film. That is what I'm most excited about to see in the Flash film is her, Michael Keaton as Batman and the kind of Flashpoint story that they're actually going for because as of right now, it's all kind of shrouded in mystery. We don't know if Reverse Flash is showing up, who's the real villain, what actually is going on. But that's about it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.